And it'll be my pleasure to turn our bird chat tonight over to Kathy and Susan from Orange County, Florida, Audubon. And I think, Kathy, you have the screen share if you want to go ahead and initiate that. So I'll tell the little story here that some folks from Orange County, Florida actually came on our bird chat last spring and then liked the idea so much they started one for their area, in which they are continuing with great speakers. So we did a little bird chat switch. I went and talked to them the other week, and now they're here with us, and we're delighted. So welcome, Kathy and Susan. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. So we'll be starting with Susan, and then I'll take up about midway. Welcome to Central Florida Birding. One thing that's nice about Florida, we're in a very unique position for migration and climate. We do have that Atlantic flyway birds coming down. A lot of the birds that go to the Caribbean come through. Um, we just had a speaker from one of the banding stations in the Keys, and they talk about the birds that they're seeing. And they do come down through Florida, sometimes to go to the Caribbean. Often they're cutting over Cuba, Yucatan to go to South America. So we are one of the ways that birds are going south for migration. We do have a lot of storms, and sometimes that sets us up for some pretty good birding too. Tonight, we're going to yeah, talk yeah. about a couple different places, some Central Florida hotspots. So we picked out about five. There's actually lots of places <laughs> that you can go to down here. Um, we have some different birds, I know, than you guys, and some that are the same. So we're going to look at these five places. Lake Apopka Wildlife Drive is what we're going to start with. And then we'll look at the wetlands, Wakiva State, Mead Gardens, Merritt Island, and Fort DeSoto. So Lake Apopka Wildlife Drive, this is a restoration area that at one time wasn't open for birding, but the birding was so good that the birders said, hey, we have to open this up. So they did. The eBird shows that there are 353 species. It's part of the Great Florida Birding Trail, and it's considered a National Audubon important bird area. So this is that large lake in the center of the state. And it's, it's kind of composed of two parts. So it's only open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and holidays because it, because it is a working restoration area. Lake Apopka at one time was the size of all this green area, but now this is, um, it's all part of the restoration area. It had been taken over by farms, which did um, kind of drain the lake and caused a little bit of pollution, some very bad pollution. So now it's a restoration area. Water quality is getting much better. Birds and wildlife are getting much better. There is a drive, which is the red portion. You can go through, it's 11 miles, kind of see the wetlands, a lot of the birds. And there's some other areas open for hiking and biking on the other side. So one of the things that a lot of people want to come down is to see our ducks. The whistling ducks are a Southern specialty. We have the fulvus on the right black belly and of course the model duck which at one time was called the florida duck um before i guess it kind of spread a little bit so they change it to model duck but those are kind of three birds that are make their home in this area and so there are some other places in florida but they're real easy to see at the lake of popka wildlife drive so in the summer we also get some good migrants we get the swallowtail kite um, pretty regularly, and the Mississippi kites, which kind of like the wetlands, it's a good area for them to get a lot of the things that they eat and eat on the wing. So these are just a few pictures from one of our local birders and photographers. The other thing people love is the purple. Purple gallinules um, are there. They're great to watch them when they have their little chicks. They're just a wonderful little active birds. The gray-headed swamp hens are actually kind of an invasive, but they've been established. So we do have like a set population in that, especially the Lake Apopka Wildlife Drive. And I think some other places are getting a little bit more throughout Florida. They're kind of gaining ground. Well, also some of the things that are real common in our winter are the painted buntings. We do get, I get them at my feeder. Um, but at the pop, at the drive, you will see them. Um, blue grosbeaks, those are very common here at certain seasons. Depending on the season, we have different different birds, but the grosbeaks do see them a lot in the summer, and now they're kind of quiet. The, but the buntings are just starting to come in. Flycatchers. Um, 
for some reason, every year we have one, it seems like we get one vermilion flycatcher kind of on his, you know, straight over from out west. Um, depending on where it will be, we'll get a female or a male, but it seems like every uh, winter we have one. Ash-throated flycatchers are a little bit more common. Um, they replace the great crested in the winter, the great crested at summers with us, and then in the winter we kind of switch to the ash-throated and some of the other flycatchers that you guys have up north to the peewees. So one of the other, um, some of the other birds that kind of have kind of come and stayed each season, we have scissor tail flycatchers that come and there's an area and they actually hang with the Western kingbirds. So if there's a, right by the wildlife drive, you can go and see both of these. They kind of do, um, flying circuits, so you do have to wait until they kind of come through this one street and you can get a good look at this beautiful flycatcher going down into the fields and catching bugs. We also have a bronzed cowbirds that have been coming every winter for the past, past few years um, at one of our Lake Apopka parks. And it's kind of a nice way to get a different look at a kind of a funny little bird with its red eye. It's kind of a cute great cowbird. And hingas, I know you guys have comorants, which we have more, more of in the winter. Um, they do come down and stay with us, but we do have a lot of anhingas, the snake birds as they call them, because they swim with just the neck of. They feed a little bit differently than the cormorants. They like to stab it, and one of the best things is watching them as they toss those fish up, once they stab them and swallow them down. So it's a little bit more um, more of a maneuver than the cormorants. And they have some great breeding plumage. They get this nice greenish around their eyes and crazy feathers around their head. Make a great pictures for when it's breeding season. Um, for the past few year, years, we've been having a horned grebe come in winter on the Lake Apopka Wildlife Drive. So that's kind of a nice specialty bird that we get to see um, come winter time. So we're looking forward to that one coming back. Um, to visit us. One thing we do have lots of are the black neck stilts. Um, I think somebody said the other day they had like 40 of them. They have the beautiful pink legs. Um, we can watch them. They do breed here. As you can see, there's a chick on the lower right. Um, and they are one of the, I think, one of the best visual looking birds and they take great pictures. So we do have a lot of nice pictures on these birds and a good population that they're pretty easy to see at the drive. Um, ducks, like Kathy was just mentioning, um, after those yellow rump warblers kind of finish our warbler migration, we get the ducks. So we will get the widgeons, gadwalls, canvasbacks, green wing and blue wing teals, ruddy ducks, northern shovelers, and that's in addition to those other ducks that are here all year round. Um, and of course, wood ducks, and we have those also in there. Also at the drive, we do have a population of the white winged dove on a certain area. Um, so those are nice, just something different to see. And in one area of the North Shore, we do get a lot of the sparrows. So we may have, this is from one year, the clay color. Um, we'll get the white crowned, white throated. So you just kind of have to look for the sparrows when they come in and they will stay with us over the winter, some of them. Uh, other things at the drive that a lot of photographers love it because you you don't just see birds, but you might see a lot of otters, bobcats, and of course on that one big paw print that's a bear. If you do venture off the road, maybe with your bike or hiking, you can see a bears. So that's kind of a different, you don't see too many of them here compared to some of the other places, but they are here and you can run into them in the early morning. Other wildlife, of course, alligators. <laughs> Lots of those there. They are get very big because they uh, aren't really culling them out. So you will see lots of those. Um, reptiles, we do have a lot of different snakes. You will see lots of pictures, especially those um, great blue herons eating snakes and turtles. Lots of turtles. Um, this is a red-bellied cooter, I believe. Balancing, I thought that was a great picture, kind of balancing on a log, don't ask me why, but 
Very cute little picture of him balancing. Raptors, as you get towards the back of the drive, I mean, you will see these throughout the drive, but we do have some sod farms still there working in the back. And that's kind of a favored place with there's some woods nearby for a lot of the um, raptors, the bald eagles, the peregrine falcons. Of course, the ospreys are throughout the park. We do have like, they do stay with us all year. Plus we probably get a few from migration and they are great to watch as they fish and hover and dive. And other ones that we get, the Merlin comes down and stays with us in the winter and we see them every year on the drive. In addition to some of the other more common um, birds and snail kites are certain areas. It, it depends on the level of the water of Lake Apopka where they're at. So sometimes you may see them at one area and they may move. Um, they're kind of picky, depends on what the level of the water is where they're feeding. So as you can see, I don't know if you've read about these, but they're making a major comeback because we've had an invasive snail, a big snail called the apple snail. And these birds have in a few generations really kind of grown that, the beak to kind of help eat these snails. And so they're, they've been doing very well. Um, hopefully they will stay good with all the changes in weather because they are very dependent on water levels. Some of the rarities, we also get um, different rarities. In April of 2017, we had a cave swallow that came and stayed with us. Also 2017 was a good year for a fork-tailed flycatcher. That was seen and kind of spent some time with us. And last year we had a smooth-billed Annie. Actually, there was a pair of them um, that came and stayed with us for a week or so that we could find them and then it's such a big place property that we don't know if they left or stayed somewhere else, but for a while they're very visible. And in 2019, we had the group build Ani came and was on the property and stayed for a, a bit during the winter, a few weeks during the winter. So it's kind of nice to be able to see something different and kind of watch to see what people are seeing. So if you would like more information, we kind of did a hotspot review for our bird chat, with bird chat for January 14th, 2021. That's on our YouTube channel where we go through the different sections of the wildlife drive and kind of tell you where to look for what. So if you're taking a trip down here and you want to visit, the drive is a great place to visit and that kind of gives you those highlights. And now Kathy's going to talk to you a little bit about Wakaiba Springs State Park. So thank you again for having us on. And, um, and I do hope that if you come down to Florida, you definitely come visit the Lake Apopka Wildlife Drive. As you can see, you never know what's gonna show up. It's actually the top eBird spot in Florida. Um, so now I wanna tell you about one of my favorite places, which is a state park called Wakaiwa Spring State Park. And um, it's considered the gem of the Florida State Parks because it has more habitats than any other state park. And they are doing a fantastic job of managing the forest through the use of prescribed burning. Um, Florida is the lightning capital of the United States and fire is part of the habitat. And if you don't let it burn, then it doesn't stay healthy. So this park, it burns and we see a lot of good effects. So we do monthly surveys. And if you do, uh, we actually gonna to talk to you about our festival that's coming up in early December. If you do happen to come to the festival, um, our headquarters is at this park. Um, if you just come down to visit, it's a great park to come to. And so here you can see a little bit of, of the way the woods look, they're very open. Um, with a, with a beautiful wire grass. And actually this next month, we're, we're having wild, wild flowers, just gorgeous. Um, so you can see a lot of different communities. The, the signature community is the Sand Hill, which are the old sand dunes that, you know, Florida used to be underwater. Um, and so this was like the middle part where the sand dunes were high. And there's also river swamp and hardwood hammock and mesic flatwoods. And two of the interesting animals of note that you'll find here 
are the southern fox squirrel, which is like twice as big as a gray squirrel, and the gopher tortoise, which is a um, keystone species that many, many other species depend on. And you will definitely see them in the afternoon because they're not early birds. They like, they like to come out when it's really hot. Um, here's the beautiful wire grass. You can see I love this picture. My friend and I were hiking and we saw the, the white-tailed deer and their little ears were sticking up. They were so cute. Um, we have a breeding population of summer tanagers. They're about ready to leave and I think they'll be joining the migrants that are coming down. So they're great to watch in the park. And oh, I went the wrong way, sorry. Um, other birds that breed in Wakaiva State Park and some other places in Central Florida are the brown-headed nuthatch. So it's pretty easy, you know, every time I go on a survey, we always see at least a few or we hear them. They have a great call. And the Bachman Sparrow, um, it's our only native sparrow uh, breeding population. We, there's Florida grasshopper sparrow, but they are super, super rare. Um, the Bachmans, if you come anytime from April till, let's see, August, you'll hear them singing. They're still there now, but they're a little harder to find. And of course, we have the wonderful red-headed woodpecker. Um, we have a good breeding population and um, the yellow-throated warblers. We have Right now we're getting some migrants, but we do have we do have some that stay all year. And on the river, the Wakaiwa River is a wild and scenic national wild and scenic uh, river. You come down; it's a great place to um, canoe or kayak. And in the summer, the prothonotary warblers breed here, and they're really quite something. Um, a great place at night when we do our festival, we actually do some night walks, and in, in the December, we actually will have woodcock there, which I guess they start doing their little displays early at, down here because you'll hear them do their display and stuff. And, and we have owls and the summer uh, we have the nighthawks and in the wintertime we'll have the whippoorwills. And if you want more information about Wakaiva Spring State Park, we did do a bird chat May 6th. So if you go to our YouTube channel, you can see all the bird chats we've done including one done by Anne, which we really enjoyed. And yes, you can see Carolina chickadees and they're so cute, they breed here. So now I wanna switch gears and talk to you about um, Orlando Wetlands Park, which I will show you the location, but this is a great photo. This is like one of the best places if you in the morning, when you get there at sunrise, you'll see all the egrets and the herons just do their fly out and it's just amazing. A lot of photographers love this location. Oops, I'll go here. I'm oh, sorry about that. So you can see the location up here. It's way to the east of us. It's almost at the coast. When you get there, you're almost at the coast. You're like mm, 25, 30 minutes from the coast, the east coast. Um, this is the first of its kind um, park that was created in um, an area that, that they set aside to take water from the, a really large water treatment plant and let the water naturally, it was already clean, but let it naturally filter to get some of the excess nutrients before going into the St. John's River. This is the first park of its kind in the United States. Now there's a lot of these. So um, this has a great history. We do have a bird chat on March, March 4th of this year that will tell you a lot more. And it's done by this photographer that's there all the time. He has the most amazing pictures and he's really funny. This is one of the best places to go look for roseate spoonbills. Um, we do get them on the wildlife drive, but they're not real consistent. And it's just an amazing bird. They do breed here in Florida. And they're just, when you see these, it's just, it's just amazing. Um, like the wildlife drive, we have all the, the egrets and the herons that you I'm sure get, the black crown, little blue herons, um, gray egrets breed there. And yeah, Sometimes the great blue herons do eat alligators. And this is our friend Jack. And that was like, like, oh my gosh, I've never seen them do that, but I've seen them eat those great big sirens, those amphibians, um, those herons eat everything. Um, you know, we have cattle egrets. I don't know if you guys have too many cattle egrets yet, but we have those common white ibis. There's the cattle egret chicks looking just like dinosaurs. 
And of course we have limpkins. I know that limpkin has made it up north, so maybe you'll be getting more of those, but um, they do love those invasive apple snails too. So that's a good story out of a bad, not so great thing. Um, the Orlando wetlands is one of the areas that you could see Crested Caracara. If you go more south, you're more likely to see them, but this is a bird we always chase in our county as a county bird, because they're just amazing. They're so elegant looking. Um, Short-tailed hawks. This Florida, this part of our, our state, Central Florida, is the, really the last area that you could find them. Um, they breed more in the southern part of Florida, but we do have some breeding pairs. So one place is Wakaiba Springs. We sometimes see them there, and we often see them at the Wetlands Park in the kettles of vultures. So on the left you have a light morph, and on the right you have a dark morph. And we've seen both at the Wetlands Park, and they're just amazing birds. So some other hot spots that we'd like to just tell you about if you come to Florida, Central Florida, and you can see that eBird map. There's lots of places to bird. But we have Mead Gardens, which is what we've been visiting a lot this last couple of weeks. That's a great place for migration, especially in the fall. Um, and then we have lots of others. So there are parakeets that some of them have kind of been escapees and established populations. So there are monk parakeets in Central Florida and the whooping cranes. There's still a few left. They, they had done an experimental uh, run where they flew some down here and they were trying to establish a colony and it just didn't quite work out. So they've, they've captured some of them, brought them back to Louisiana, but there's still a few here. And actually the two in that picture Susan and I went to see in Lake County, which is a little west of where we live, um, just last week, and they are not banded, so it's kind of interesting. Um, so if you do come to Florida, check eBird, and you can see where the whooping cranes are, because they are just amazing birds. All right, so let's talk about mead. So um, our migration pattern in the fall, a lot of birds come down the center of Florida, because they're not in a hurry and they just kind of take their time and they're enjoying all the good places to stop. But in the spring, they tend to stick to the coast. So we get not as good of a spring migration, um, but meat gardens will get some. So these are some of the birds that have shown up. Um, we've had things like Philadelphia Vireo, hooded warbler. We've had a couple of hooded warblers already this year. We have cuckoos that are here through the summer. Um, we've had western tanagers show up in the spring and of course that's the cerulean warbler that we were so excited because to get in central florida we usually get them on the coast but that was from like last week which was just spectacular um fort de soto um, is amazing for fall and spring migration probably spring more than fall and this is a little spit of land um, that is the first piece of land that birds that are coming across the Gulf hit. So spring is really, really great time to go there. We have a bird chat from April 9th of this last year. And here are just some of the birds you might see. Um, American oyster catchers, snowy plovers. Um, they breed there. Wilson's plover, we have piping plover, black skimmers, um, Nande parakeets, and gray kingbirds, uh, yellow crowned night herons, all really common. And then in the spring, lots of warblers. We, they get a lot more variety than we do here in the center part of the state. So a lot of us will go over there. Matter of fact, we have a trip over there in April. Um, there are some Florida specialty birds um, that if you come to Florida, you definitely want to go see. And um, the red cockaded woodpecker, which is endangered, is one of them. And actually our festival, there will be um, two trips, I believe, that will go out to places where you're more likely to see them. And they're here, just certain times of year, they're harder to find because they're you know not out as much. But um, Hal Scott Preserve is one place, Ocala National Forest and Three Lakes Wildlife Management Area. The, the National Forest and Three Lakes are two places that trips will go out in our festival. And they're just really quite something to see. So check that out. And we have a bird chat all about the red cockaded woodpecker on April 8th of 2020. 
Another specialty, it's our only endemic bird, is the Florida scrub jay, which are really cool birds. They're really curious. They're one of those birds, if you see them, they're not gonna fly away. They're just gonna kind of look at you. They, you know, there's a sentinel, they have a whole family system set up and there will be a sentinel bird that will kind of alert the rest of the family group. And they're just, just, you have, if you come to Florida, you need to go see a Florida scrub jay. So um, we also, on our festival, we'll be going to two places that you're likely to see them the Seminole State Forest and Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. Um, Rock Springs Run is a place that we're starting to do surveys on, and that's another place. So it's an awesome bird, and if you come to Florida, you definitely want to check bird to see where they're being seen and go see them for yourself. So I take just a few minutes to talk about our festival in case your interest is piqued and you know, um, I know like sometimes if, if you've never been to an area, going to a birding festival is a good way to explore it. So you can kind of get the highlights and then go back at another time at your own leisure. So it will be December 2nd through 6th, 2021. And weather-wise, it's usually a really, really nice time of year. It's usually we don't get a lot of rain then. And the temperatures are just really mild. You know, if we're lucky, it'll be in the 50s in the morning, maybe. Um, and it will be like mid 70s. It could get to 80 something, you know, climate change, but it won't be in the 90s. So, it's, and the humidity will be down. So, it will be really nice and pleasant. As you can see, this is from one of our previous festivals. So actually, it was, you know, well, us Florida people, we have, no, we don't have thin blood, but we do get cold easily. So, it probably was in the 50s and we're wearing jackets. So, here's just a sampling of some of the trips um, that we'll have. Um, there'll be half day and full day trips, and there is no registration fee, um, which makes it nice. And we'll go to a lot of trips on the North Shore, which will be by car. So, you know, um, if there's accessibility issues, you can be in your car. Um, there are other hiking trips. Uh, Orlando Wetlands Park we'll go to, Merritt Island, and Wakiva Springs, and a few other places. Well, some of the feature trips will be birding by ear. There'll be a Kara Kara quest. So they'll go to a known place for that. Scrub jays and pineland species. The Cala National Forest, which is a wonderful place. Woodpecker extravaganza. So you can see a lot of our woodpeckers. For those photographers, there'll be some photography trips, including sunrise photography. There'll be a kayaking trip and a raptors trip. And there'll be others too. And our, um, our trips will be posted probably by the end of the month. But if you, um, you can check our website, um, you can sign up to be on our email list if you're not a member, and then you'll get emails about the festival. This is the website for the festival. So if you go there now, you'll see the trips from last year. Um, to give you an idea, a lot of them will be similar and you'll see the leaders from last year, a lot of them will be similar. So it's www.orangeaudubonfl.org backslash festival.